So in this question, we're trying to figure out how long it takes electrons to get from a car battery to its motor. And we know that the length between the car battery and the motor is a given quantity. It was given as 0.85 meters. And we probably recall from physics one that the velocity of an object will equal its distance, which we'll just call L, divided by the time required to traverse that distance. In this context, because we have moving charges, we're going to actually call the velocity the drift velocity, or actually just drift speed, because we're not really concerned with direction in this question. So we can modify our equation from physics one to say that the drift speed is equal to the length divided by the time. And because we're asked how long it takes the process to happen, we're solving for time. So why don't we multiply both sides of this equation by time? So now we would cancel out the times on that side. We have t times the drift speed is equal to the length. And then continuing to solve for time, we would divide both sides by the drift speed. So the drift speeds cancel out on the left side. And now we can see that the time it takes will equal the length divided by the drift speed. We already mentioned we have the length. Let's talk about the drift speed. The drift speed is related to a quantity known as the current density as well as the number of charge carriers per unit volume times the elementary charge. This is an equation that you learned in this chapter. It is the equation for current density. We can actually solve this equation for the drift speed d, or v sub d, excuse me, by dividing both sides of the equation by that quantity ne. So the ne's cancel out, and then we can see that we have current density divided by ne will equal the drift speed. So we're going to substitute this expression for drift speed into the equation that we developed for time. So now we have time equals the length divided by current density divided by that ne quantity. Now we can do a little bit of algebraic simplification by performing what I've been taught as keep change flip. So you keep the L, you change the division to multiplication, and then you flip this fraction upside down. So you'll actually have NE over the current density. So here's our expression for time, but it turns out we still need an expression for the current density J. Now current density J in its most basic form is essentially the amount of current divided by a cross-sectional area. And so we have to make another substitution. We're going to plug current divided by area in for j here. So now we have time equals LNE over current over area. We'll do keep change flip one more time. So keep the LNE, change division to multiplication, and then flip this fraction upside down to make area over current. So here's our expression. We just have to plug in the known values. Let's make sure we have them. So we need LNE area and current. So we already mentioned that we have the length right here. It says the number of charge carriers per unit volume is this value. So that's actually lowercase n. We have a current right here, that's our i. And then we have a cross-sectional area of 0.21. We'll plug in all those known values, and then we'll talk about the fact that we have to convert the centimeters squared into meters squared. So here are all the numbers plugged in. As noted, we need to convert the centimeters squared into meters squared. So we all perhaps know that we can multiply by a conversion factor. We probably know that one centimeter is 10 to the minus two meters. But be careful here because you're trying to cancel centimeters squared, not centimeters. So you actually have to square that conversion factor. And by squaring that conversion factor, the centimeters squared will end up canceling with the centimeters squared but you'll have to actually square the quantity 10 to the negative two. So go ahead, pick up your calculator, punch all of this in very carefully, of course. And let's see what you get when you do so. And by the way, you might have noticed we also plugged in for E this value for the elementary charge. That is a known value, of course. So after punching this all in, you should get an answer of about 806. And since every unit was in standard units, this would come out in the standard unit of time, which is seconds. Your homework system may want you to convert this into minutes. So we'll multiply by a conversion factor of one minute is equivalent to 60 seconds. The seconds cancel out. So basically you're dividing 806 by 60 and you should get about 13.4 minutes. So this would be the correct answer to the question.